All right, everybody, welcome to what are we calling this? The Jono and Huo show. We're kind of doing like a Woj and uh, Zach Lowe, breaking down some of the trade deadline. Um, not as crazy of a trade deadline as, as we all expected, um, but still a lot to talk about. So joining me today uh, is Jonathan Chan. Uh, Jonathan, how you doing? Doing good, uh, doing good, Kevin. What's up? Yeah, I mean, your Raptors, one of the teams that kind of some people thought might make a move, but I mean, I guess they're sitting at the two seed. No reason for them to make a move, right? You're happy with that? Yeah, happy with that. Two seed. Uh, the entire team is showing good chemistry. I, I don't see any reason to to kind of throw that off. There's not really a big hole in the lineup either. So happy with the happy with the no movement. Yeah, I guess you can't help but be happy with it. But I mean. Maybe we he didn't make a trade because Masai is actually going to the Knicks next year, so maybe he just didn't want to do anything. How dare you? Um, I'm just preparing you, man. I'm just preparing how you. How dare you? I've heard that rumor for like three years now. Don't need more of it. But uh, yeah. you, you're pretty unhappy with uh, with the Warriors' moves today. Uh, we'll get into it. The Warriors <laughs> traded like half their team, and I'm not. I don't know. I don't know how to feel. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll gather my feelings over the next ten minutes before we talk about it. But um, let, let's start by talking about some of the guys who actually didn't get traded. A um, couple guys, uh, Derek Rose, everyone thought might go to a contender. He didn't get moved. Uh, Tristan Thompson didn't get moved, so he might get bought out. Might not. Who knows? Um, again, we mentioned none of the Raptors guys. Uh, Drew Holiday was someone who was talked about as being moved, but, you know, didn't happen. Um, a lot of the Knicks players who, you know, signed that one-year contract like or two-year's contract might be valuable for a contender. Uh, besides Marcus Morris, none of them got moved. Um, who among these guys kind of really surprised you, or which teams really surprised you by not making a move? Um, I guess the Detroit not trading uh, Derrick Rose kind of surprised me, just because it's, it's just more bad asset management on their end. They kept Andre Drummond to the point where he was traded for like literal bench warmers and a second round pick, um, and now again Rose is having you know one of the best seasons of his career just a renaissance year and they didn't cash in and get some assets for what's obviously going to be a long rebuild for them. It's just a really weird move for them not to, to, to kind of stand pat there. Yeah. There were rumors that they were asking for two first round picks, which that, that might've been why teams were turned off by it. Um, but uh, yeah, him and, and another guy, Davis Bertans, I thought would for sure be moved. Um, but again, they were asking for two first round picks too. So I don't know. I guess these teams, these teams stay bad because their management is bad. I guess we can't be too surprised. Yeah, no, uh, nobody's surprised by the Wizards having having bad management. Uh, hey, but they picked up uh, they picked up Jerome Robinson, so you know they're gonna be great. Stacked. Um, yeah, let's let's talk about uh, the four teamer that happened two nights ago. Actually, kind of happened almost in the middle of the night for you people on the East Coast. Um, bear with me; this one's gonna take a while to to kind of sort through. Uh, so Houston. Ends up with Robert Covington, Jordan Bell, who they traded for Bruno Caboclo, and a Warriors second round pick. Minnesota ends up with Malik Beasley, Juancho Hernan Gomez, Jared Vanderbilt, Evan Turner, and a 2020 Nets first round pick. Atlanta ends up with Clint Capella and Nene. Denver ends up with Shabazz Napier, who they traded to Washington for Jordan McRae, Kata Bates Diop, Gerald Green, Noah Vonley, and a Rockets first. Um, Let's I mean, the, the Minnesota and the Denver part, I don't really care too much about it, especially since we're, we're technically here to talk about fantasy. So let's just go with who do you think, quote-unquote, won this trade? Um, it's got to be Atlanta, right? I mean, they got they got Capella. They have now like a legitimate center to put with Trey Young to play beside John Collins. And they did come up with probably – Arguably the best player in this trade. Uh, Covington's probably up there as well. But I think Atlanta came out the winner here. Uh, they can finally... Maybe Trey won't uh, won't be too disgruntled like uh, like Cat was get, was growing in Minnesota. Yeah, I'm actually looking at it now. What did, Atlanta just gave up a Nets first and Evan Turner's contract? Like, that's actually nothing now that I think about it. Yep. Yeah, and I mean, they were... They were, uh, they were you know, some people were thinking that they were going to go after Andre Drummond, but I actually think Clint Cabela is a better fit. Uh, he's hurt right now. He's got a little bit of a heel issue, but when he comes back, he's going to be, a, you know, that starting center. He's going to be a rim runner. Um, what do you think about his fantasy? You know, do you think he's going to be better for fantasy in Atlanta or 
would he have been better off staying in Houston? Uh, I mean, he'll probably be about the same. Uh, somebody with Capella, Capella's skill set, he's not. I don't think he's tied to obviously the Houston system. He wasn't exactly running, gunning threes himself. So I think with Atlanta, he'll have the same opportunity to, you know, get grab boards, get some putbacks, all that kind of thing. Um, probably be about the same. I wouldn't expect uh, anything less from Capella. Uh, the, the minutes will probably be up there as well. That's fair. Yeah, I think uh, Trey will probably just run a ton of pick and roll with him. But, um, I mean, Trey's other pick and roll partner, John Collins, do you think his numbers will be impacted? John Collins has been going off this year. I know he's on my fantasy team. Some idiot dropped him after he got hurt, and I picked him up. Yeah, I, I, I don't see Collins... Uh, He's going to get minutes either way. He's still going to get opportunity. I don't think Capella's, uh, I guess, well, offensive offerings aren't going to be uh, enough to uh, get rid of or take down any of Collins' usage. I think he'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, the one thing I am thinking for John Collins is he's shooting 36% on threes this year, uh, hitting about 1.3 per game, which is pretty solid. You know, So maybe he'll he'll step out there a little bit more with Capella inside a lot. So uh, let's move on to the Rockets side of the trade. The Rockets, uh, as I mentioned, gave up a whole bunch of stuff, actually, and came away with Robert Covington, who is now their starting power forward. Yes. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Rockets deciding that uh, actually height doesn't matter and that they're just going to start four, six, seven dudes and then Russell Westbrook? Yeah, it's kind of a weird thing, considering that their main competition – or one of the main teams that to compete with in the West is the Lakers, and they have three pretty solid big men that P.J. Tucker's going to have to guard. Uh, I can't believe I just put Anthony Davis in the pretty solid category, but there it is. Yeah, group them right in there with Dwight Howard and JaVale McGee. Oh, yeah. Exactly. They're, all, they're all pretty solid. Um, no, I think I don't think P.J. Like, P.J. Tucker's already hurt. He's dealing with a shoulder thing, and now he has to play, you know, 35 minutes – uh, Dude, against you know seven footers, it's it's so weird, but and Covington's already kind of shown this year that he's not, uh, he's not best used as a power forward, uh, not great for his for his skill set and yeah, I don't don't really make a whole lot of sense of this. I, I thought maybe they'd be making another move to get another big man, but didn't happen. Well, yeah, I I mean the Tucker thing is is pretty insane. Like, not not only are we talking about the Lakers. I mean, the Clippers, they kind of do go small, so I can see it with them. But if they end up playing Denver, and who the hell is going to guard Jokic? If they end up playing Utah, like I get that Rudy is compromised a little in that matchup. But, I mean, Rudy's going to have a field day with P.J. Tucker underneath the basket. Yep. Um, yeah, it's a strange move. I guess it's just Maury doubling down on, on small ball, especially in the playoffs. Um, I haven't watched this. I mean, they're playing the Lakers right now. Uh, Bill Simmons has already turned it off. He says it's unwatchable. Um, but... I'm kind of curious to see how that's going to go. Um, that being said, for Covington, you know, what do you think about his fantasy prospects? I mean, he's pretty much just a, a catch and shoot guy, anyways. And I guess theoretically, he's just going to stand in the corner and catch and shoot threes, anyways. So, what do you think about him? I mean, if you have Covington, are you, you know, happy or sad that you know he got traded to this Rockets team? Um, I guess I'm happier. He's he's goes to a team with obviously you know a much better offensive team than than Minnesota. Uh, there are two of the heaviest usage players in the league and Westbrook and Harden that he has to, you know, compete for, for shots now. But I think the, he might shoot just a few, a few less field goals per game, but I think uh, just the attention that those two draw, it's going to help him see, get, get some better looks. So I think he, his efficiency might go up, uh, which has always been a problem for Covington. So hopefully that the, uh, the field goal percentage can make a, make a little bit of a jump in, uh, in Houston. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. I think I mean, Minnesota doesn't really have any creators. Um, and I, I think something that's going to help his numbers a lot is the Rockets are one of the fastest-paced teams in the league. So he's just going to be jacking threes. And they'll also have a, you know more chances to get steals and blocks, which is something else that you get with Covington. Yep. All right. So, I mean, I mentioned it, the Minnesota, the Denver part. Do we really care about first-round picks uh, right now? Not really. So yeah. I, I think – Minnesota, we'll talk about more, them more later when we move on. But let's finish up the Atlanta side of the uh, this deal, or you know what Atlanta's been doing. They traded back for Dwayne Dedman, who they let go of this offseason. They traded Jabari Parker and Alex Len to Sacramento for Dwayne Dedman and two second-round picks. 
Um, do we care? Uh, not not really. Uh, and like, and the only way Deadman is going to be useful is if uh, Capella stays hurt for an extended period. So I guess while while Capella's hurt, you can add Deadman as a you know a short term solution. But once Capella comes back, Deadman's uh, going to go back to the bench. Minutes are are going to be pretty scarce, and he's not going to be a super super useful option. Yeah, I. I don't know. I I think, like you said, it, you're probably right. He's a good streaming option while Capella is out. Other than that, we don't really care. Jabari Parker, who one of my favorite players to watch, honestly. Um, but and he just joins a crazy logjam in Sacramento. Sacramento is another team I'm surprised they didn't make any kind of moves. Uh, I'm looking at the depth chart right now. They've got Bagley, Bielicha, Oliver, and Jabari Parker all playing the four. Um, yeah, they've got a lot of good players who I mean they go like 12 deep which I mean it's not very helpful like you, I feel like they could have packaged something to move um, but I don't know well, who knows with Sacramento there's another team that who knows what they're doing yeah but um, just I don't, I, don't, I don't really understand Sacramento trading for two more bigs when the whole the problem this year is when he's healthy Bagley just kind of needs minutes but there's so many such a logjam at the four right now, like you said, four guys, uh, and Bagley's just not gonna get those minutes, so it's kind of, kind of like it's kind of a strange move, like you said. Yeah, I mean, I think it's almost just like they they failed the experiment. They signed Dwayne Dedman, it didn't work out, um, so they're kind of bailing on that contract and getting Jabari back, getting Alex Len back. But to have to send out two second round picks, that's kind of a uh, kind of a bad job by Vlade. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on to another team in the Bay, my team. Um, a trade that I have not quite come to grips with as far as do I like it or not. Um, let's just get into details first. Golden State trades D'Angelo Russell, uh, J- Jacob Evans, Omari Spellman to Minnesota for Andrew Wiggins. Uh, a 2021 first that's top three protected converts to a, uh, unprotected in 2022. If you know it's not transferred in 21, and then a 2021 20, second. Um, why wasn't that enough, Jonathan? Not enough. Uh, Minnesota's not enough. Minnesota's on. pretty bad. I think that pick is going to end up being extremely valuable for the Warriors. Like, that is that's the one thing that I'm hoping for. But I mean, have you seen Wiggins' contract? Like, let's not even talk about him as a player. <laughs> have you seen his contract? I believe I have. I think somebody was yelling at me about it no less than 20 minutes ago. Yeah, I don't know what asshole was doing that, but 94.6 <laughs> million over the next three years? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. If for, I, I, that's what I can't get over. Like, I get that Wiggins is, you know, he's still only 25. I think, I think you know. You're, you're Canadian. You're probably right on top of it. But Yes. I mean, he, I, I theoretically, he's a good fit, but I feel, feel like the, the term theoretically has just been attached to his, him this his whole career, and it's never quite worked out, like practically. But can Draymond bully him into being a good defensive player? That's the yeah. real key here. That is actually the hope. If you know Draymond can kind of bully him, like you said, into being a in, into being a good defensive player. I mean, he has all the tools for that. And then hopefully next year and the years after, with Steph and Clay providing him as much space as he could possibly need. If he can be 120% of Harrison Barnes, I'm not too mad at the trade. I've started to come around on it, to be <laughs> honest. I mean, my only issue is is that yesterday uh, there was reports that there was a quote-unquote large gulf between what Minnesota was offering and what the, and what the Warriors wanted. And then the details of the trade came out and... Uh, I don't know, was the wide gulf like made up by a second round pick? Like I don't get it. I'm assuming it had to do with the protections on the first. That that would that would be my my guess. Just something about the protections or what like what it goes to next year or something like that. But Yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's probably what it was, but I mean hope I was hoping for you know, two second rounds or something. Uh, two first rounders or something like that. I was trying to be greedy. I like D'Angelo a lot. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, let's, let's, let's get into the, what it means for fantasy. We'll talk about the warrior side first. Cause that's kind of, uh, that's just kind of a mess. So we might as well get out of the way Wiggins that uh, for this year, 
Wiggins is is going to gain value. I I don't really uh, he's going to kill your field goal percentage probably because there's really no one on this team who can score. But his usage is probably going to go up, um, at least until Steph comes back. Because if you look up and down this roster, I guarantee you there's five names you've probably never even heard of. <laughs> and that's and they don't even they don't even have like the minimum number of people. And it's like the starting lineup is going to be like Kai Bowman, Damian Lee, Andrew Wiggins, Draymond Green, and Marquise Chris. I don't trust any of those people to score 15 points in a game consistently, except Wiggins. So he's just going to be putting up shots. They're going to be 20 footers, but they're going to be shots. And uh, that's going to be pretty valuable for your fantasy team. I think. What yeah. about you? Yeah, no, I totally agree. Wiggins, his usage is going to, going to completely skyrocket. He's going to get all the shots he can handle. Uh, hopefully the field goal percentage, like you said, doesn't tank too badly, but it'll happen. There's just, like you said, nobody else on this team that can score. Uh, a lot of people are going been running to add Damian Lee. Uh, enough. Don't feel great about that one. He's been playing big minutes and he hasn't really done anything with them. So I don't see, I don't see that changing now with uh with Wiggins there. Uh, no, nah. I'm not on every, pretty much everybody, but Wiggins and Draymond here. Yeah, I mean, Damian Lee is if he steps into a high volume of shots that I mean he might because uh, there's another small couple of small trades we'll talk about later but the Warriors got rid of some of their wing depth. He's just not consistent enough, really, to really do anything. He's kind of a catch-and-shoot guy. Like, he's he'll have good games, he'll have bad games. It's not really anything to count on. Uh, Wiggins is probably going to be the guy who does everything. This offense is going to – it's already the worst team in the league offensively, <laughs> and they traded their starting point guard for Andrew Wiggins, and then they traded their best scorer – or second-best scorer in Alec Burks and then they traded Glenn Robbins. Like this team is going to score like 85 points again. But uh, that's what you want for this year, right? That that that's the whole that's the whole point. The the hope was that they were going to do it in an exciting fashion. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like we hopefully we were hoping to lose games like 115 to 130. Uh, now we're going to lose games 85 to 130. I don't know. The Wizards are doing that. Their fans don't seem very happy. Well, I mean, we also won, you know championships in the last five years so. yeah yeah we can't and we you know we see the vision you know we're smart we're smart basketball fans out here in, in the bay um moving on to the minnesota side uh obviously carl anthony towns gets his wish him he joins d'angelo russell um i don't know what do you think i i i, I mean it makes sense but does is the team going to be a lot better no just looking up and down their roster right now it's a bad roster it's like i mean they've been rebuilding for what like 10 12 years now and their starting lineup has joshua kogi and jared culver in it it's awful uh i don't understand what they're doing roster wise but i mean russell's a good get like you said uh i like the i like the guy as a player um his value doesn't really change much it's just him and towns there and they're gonna you know they're gonna do their thing um another guy here i like actually is malik beasley he'll be the only scorer uh, coming off the bench, just for the the second unit there, he's going to be the only one on that team that can score coming off the bench. So I I do like him as a kind of a low end uh, scoring and threes add. Yeah, Russell, I agree with you. I think I mean, what is he right now? Twenty three and seven. Yeah, couple. Of That's pretty much what he's going to be. Like, there's almost no situation where you could tell me where his his value is going to increase more than that. I mean, maybe he gets. I mean, he's not going to be more effective with Carl. They don't really. Maybe they have like a two man game and his assist bump up a little bit, but I really don't see it. Uh, Russell had all the usage in the world in, in Golden State, and if that's all he can do, then that's pretty much his ceiling. Uh, Beasley, I do agree with you, kind of interesting. I did read somewhere that they might have him start because they like a Kogi coming off the bench as like a like a defensive stopper type. Uh-huh. Can two and the three. So that's probably even better for Beasley. Uh, what do you think this means for Carl Anthony Towns? I mean, do we care? Uh, no, his, he's already. Like one one of the most consistent you know fantasy guys out there, and adding Russell is not gonna take away any usage from him. I mean, Wiggins is a pretty high usage guy himself, so I don't think adding you know a playmaker is gonna hurt him at all. If anything, it could help, but he's I, I nothing changes with him really. Maybe a couple extra open looks with with Russell drawing attention, but otherwise he'll be fine. We don't really care on his end. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if the one thing that hopefully changes is maybe he starts to care and plays defense, but. Right. Russell doesn't do either of those things. So 
uh, as we talk about it, I've talked myself into it. This team's going to be awful next year, too. We're going to get a top one pick in 2020. <laughs> top one pick. Yeah, who's tw- who's in 2022? Is that is that Bronny's draft? Uh, Bronny? Yeah, 2022 <laughs> might be Bronny, yeah. That'd actually be hilarious. Oh, yeah, he can come out of high school, huh? Yeah. Wow. All right, I'm sold. We're getting Bronny and Andrew Wiggins. You're not getting Bronny. You're trading two first-round picks for Giannis. But Giannis will have signed with Masai and the Knicks. See, come on. you got to think about these things. He's not going to the Knicks. Not even for Masai. Oh, boy. Uh, Nobody uh, wants to go to the Knicks. That's true. Um, Who knows? No. (laughs) People would take money. You know what I mean? (laughs) Um, So, yeah, let's just finish up the Golden State side of the trade. Uh, Like I mentioned, they or side, side of the transactions, I guess. They shipped off Alec Burks and Glenn Robinson III to Philadelphia for three future first-round, uh, second-round picks. Holy crap, three future first-rounds would be incredible. Uh, <laughs> three second-round picks for Alec Burks and Glenn Robinson. Um, I really like this for Philadelphia. I think what they need is is more shooting, uh, more wing depth. Um, I mean, it's kind of like uh, two years ago when they brought in, what's his name, Marco Bellinelli and uh, Ursan Ilyasova. I think this is kind of a similar thing. Um, what do you think? Do you think uh, any of them are fantasy relevant? And then you know, uh, the flip side of that is—is is their basketball team going to be better? Uh, the basketball team is definitely going to be better. Like you said, they desperately needed more shooting, uh, and they got it. I think Burks might be able to maintain some value. Uh, I know his value is obviously inflated a lot because, like you said, he was the one of two people that could on Golden State that could score, but. Um, coming off the bench here, he might be a, a okay like low end streamer, like if Josh Richardson is hurt or something like that. But Simmons and Embiid are just so heavy on the usage that it's difficult to say uh, what Burks's looks are going to be like consistently, like how many shots he's going to take, that kind of thing. Uh, not somebody I would trust unless Richardson is hurt. Yeah, that's fair. Burks is his numbers are a little bit fl- inflated in Golden State. Like we said, there's literally no one there who can even dribble a basketball. So they really liked Alec Burks. Um, he was averaging about 16, four and three. Uh, those are all going to go down because, like you said, there's just no usage for him in in Philly. Um, I have a hot take. I think by the playoffs, I mean, they're what are they like a six seed right now? So maybe they won't even make the playoffs. But in the playoffs, I think there, I think there's going to be games where. If Joshua Richardson is healthy, uh, Horford heads to the bench and Glenn Robinson starts. I think it just makes so much more sense for their team. Yeah, Horford and MB just doesn't work uh, together. I think it would be, like you said, much better for them if Horford is kind of anchoring that second unit. Yeah, yeah. and I think the spacing, I mean, Tobias at the four, like everything just makes more sense if you put in a natural three, like throwing Robinson the third in there. I mean, Matisse is a three technically, but I mean, he can't shoot, so. Uh, I, th- I think it I, I don't know I really like this trade for Philly um, it's better than like the I, I heard like this package was was dangled for Derrick Rose too and I actually like getting these two guys more than I would have liked them getting Derrick Rose yeah that makes sense uh, yeah speaking of Derrick Rose's team they did something interesting is the only way I can really say that uh, they traded Andre Drummond to the Cleveland Cavaliers to Brandon Knight, who unfortunately for him has to put back on the jersey where he got literally killed by DeAndre Jordan wearing um, John Henson and then a 2023 20, second. So Drummond goes to the Cavs where he joins a loaded, quote unquote, loaded front court. Tristan Thompson still there. Kevin Love, Larry Nance. Um, I don't know. What are you thinking Cleveland is doing? I know he's an expiring, so are they kind of just trying him out, you think? Yeah, I think this is like. They're just grabbing the expiring, hoping for some more cap room. They're getting, you know, rid of dead weight on the bench. Did, Knight and Henson, do they even play? I, I feel like they don't play at all. No. Um, yeah, so just some dead weight off the bench. Um, for them, Drummond is still Drummond. He did. He doesn't really need a system fit. He's just kind of there to get rebounds and not shoot anything outside of three feet. Uh, his numbers won't change. Um, anybody that was rostering Tristan Thompson for boards, that's probably not going to work anymore because he's going to be coming off the bench so great um everybody else there is going to be fine drummond he might average 20 boards because colin sexton and darius garland can't make a shot to save their lives so that is, that's disrespectful they're they're really good players 
they're really good young players. No, they're not. <laughs> oh boy, I'm looking at this roster. Matthew Delvadova is still in the NBA. Yes. Oh uh, boy. Um, but yeah, like I think, like you said, like, probably the most important thing to take care of is is one that Drummond is going to keep doing his thing. But I am worried about the other Cavs guys. I think Drummond. All right, Drummond is he gets disrespected a lot as like, oh, he's not that good. Oh, he can't play in today's NBA. But he's the all-time leading re, uh, like rebound percentage guy of all time. And I get Kevin Love is good. I get Tristan Thompson is good. I get Larry Nance is good. But Andre Drummond is going to get his rebounds. So you can pretty much expect Love, Nance, Tristan Thompson all to get downgraded. Tristan Thompson, honestly, probably is going to get bought out. Yep. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I can't imagine too much else changes for the Cavs. Kind of a weird move, but uh, I figure if you if you have all the cap room, you might as well bring it in and see if you can. I mean, if shoot, I was just thinking, like, if I'm Drummond, I'm not re-signing in Cleveland after I spent my whole career in Detroit. <laughs> no way. I'm going I'm going anywhere. I'm taking a pay cut to go anywhere. I'll go anywhere except those two places. Yeah. Uh on the Detroit side, um, you know, they free up Drummond, that frees up uh someone who's actually a really interesting ad if still available in your league. Christian Wood is now gonna be a full time starter, I imagine. Um he's someone who's who's done pretty well in limited minutes and I think if he ends up playing 30, 32 minutes a game, he's really gonna be valuable for your team. Other than that, uh, Brandon Knight, John Henson, we don't care. Uh, the other dudes on Detroit, it's hard to say who's even going to end up playing games. But Christian Wood, uh, what do you think about him as, as a potential pickup? Mm, I, I like him a lot. Um, just, you know, uh, he can score. He had, what, 20, 20 and 7 in his last in his last outing. Um, he's going to block a ton of shots. And hopefully he doesn't hit uh, a wall. I know that... Uh, Dumbuya, he was playing pretty well for a week after he got put in the starting lineup, but then he kind of fell off a cliff. So hopefully Wood can kind of keep up what he's been doing in the limited minutes in the full time role. But definitely he is a he's a must add. Yeah, I mean Christian Wood is is one of those dudes who's like, if you just look at his per thirty six month numbers, you just think he's the greatest player that ever lived. Um, in forty nine games this year, his per thirty six twenty one eleven, uh, two blocks a game. So. That's obviously not going to translate directly, but uh, the guy is super talented, and uh, he'll he'll get a chance to do some stuff. Um, let's move on to my computer froze, but I know the next trade we're going to talk about is the a three teamer between the Clippers, the Knicks, and the Wizards. Uh, the Clippers fortify their bench, actually their starting lineup with Marcus Morris and Isaiah Thomas, who they are unceremoniously cutting. Uh, the New York Knicks get Maurice Harkless, Issaf Sanon, uh, a Clippers first, then a Pistons second, and Washington picks up a uh, first round bust, Jerome Robinson. Um, I mean, I don't really care about the picks or the Wizards. We can pretty much skip them. This Clippers lineup, they've already said they're going to start Beverly, George, Kawhi, Marcus Morris at the four, and then Zubat. This Clippers lineup is scary good. Yeah. Um, I'm Morris fits in quite well there, actually. I do like the trade for them. Uh, he was playing very well, in, well, well in New York as a volume scorer. Uh, obviously, for fantasy, he's not going to get that uh, that ridiculous number of shots with Kawhi and George playing as well. So he's downgraded to quite a bit. But I think the fit in LA, he will still be worth rostering. But uh, the numbers are going to take a take a big downgrade. I think. Yeah, those numbers are going to go down. He'll still have big games where Paul George or Kawhi Leonard sits, but. Um... He, he's definitely going to end up taking a backseat in fantasy. Uh, for real life, though, I, I do like their – I mean, their two through four are actually all – they can all pretty much – they're all six and nine dudes who can all guard different positions. And it's, it's very interesting lineup. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Murray Sarkis on the Knicks, we don't care. The, the Wizards actually – I mean, the one thing they did do that was interesting, we mentioned it before, they traded Jordan McRae for Shabazz Napier. Um. I'm not the biggest Ish Smith fan, uh, but I'm not a big Shabazz Napier fan either, even though he's been good just because he's been playing 35 minutes a game with the with the Timberwolves. I don't know. I don't care. Do you care? No, not really. I mean, Napier could, if he takes the the starting job from Ish Smith, he could, again, put up you know the volume stats just purely based on minutes. But as of right now, we don't know how that rotation is going to shake out, and you can't really trust him. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the one thing is Washington does play with a ton of pace, and 
McCray was doing well and, and Isaiah Thomas was at least playing minutes. So now that those two are gone, we can assume that Napier is going to step into those. So he actually, he might actually have some decent amount of value. I'd probably hold on to see how the rotation shakes out. All right. Uh, our last trade that we're going to cover tonight, um, a three-teamer. I didn't even know this was a three-teamer until I, I started prepping for this. Memphis ends up with Justice Winslow, Dion Waiters, the edible god, Gordie Jang, and Miami ends up uh, trading for not Andre, uh, Andre Vidala, Jay Crowder, Solomon Hill, and Minnesota somehow ends up with James Johnson and all of this. Um, who do you like this trade better for, Memphis or Miami? Uh, I mean, it's got to be got to be Miami, right? They got their guy. They got the veteran uh, Iguodala. It'd be great for for their playoff run. Crowder's also a pretty useful player. I'm assuming. Oh, Crowder's gonna start. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Crowder's a solid player. Hill's a streaky but you know decent shooter. Uh, Memphis. I mean, Winslow's always hurt. Waiters is Dion Waiters. Uh, that's whatever. And uh, the the best player that Memphis got in this deal is Gorgie Deng. Um, not quite sure why Minnesota traded him for James Johnson, but as we said, Minnesota management is iffy at best. So, fantasy wise, I don't think any of these guys are gonna be super useful. Uh, Crowder's still kind of, eh, I don't know. Crowder's doing had a, had a quite a bit of usage in uh, in Memphis, so it's tough to say. But none of these guys really excite me. Yeah, for fantasy, I mean, it's it's kind of just, you know, swapping parts. Uh, Crowder is the one guy who, I mean, he's penciled in and starting at the four, but with Miami, they, they move things around in their lineup a lot. Uh, Andre is going to see minutes, but he's not really a fantasy value guy. Um, yeah, I mean, the one guy I'm interested in, of course, is Justice Winslow. Um, he's a talented dude, just never healthy, like you said. Uh, he kind of is, in my opinion, probably the closest. I mean, obviously not the playmaker Andre is and or was. But he's probably the closest guy we have to Andre Iguodala, like kind of like the, the spiritual successor. So it's kind of interesting they got swapped for each other. Um, I think he does fit pretty well with Morant and uh, Jaron Jackson. But again, he's never healthy, so we might not even see it for a while. Uh, I think it's good value, though. I mean, they basically turned Conley and uh, a bunch of and, and a bunch of nothing into Justice Winslow and a whole bunch of first and second round picks. So I can't really hate on that. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Memphis is looking good. I mean, they're set up for years to come. Like, like you said, I don't care about Justice Winslow or Dion Waiters or or you Gang even. Like, he's going to be behind Jonas Valanciunas. So, you can't play any of these dudes in fantasy, which is what they told me to talk about. Even though I want to talk about other stuff. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think that that about wraps it up. There's a couple other smaller trades. Scalabi Sierra got picked up. Who cares? Um, these kind of stuff. They they don't really matter. I think we tackled the important ones. Um, I, I would not say the NBA landscape has been changed at all, but some interesting stuff, um, interesting stuff for your fantasy league, some guys to consider. Uh, I think we only get, got like three guys that I think actually increased in value. Like Covington probably increased in value. Malik Beasley, Christian Wood. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. for, for increased value, I think that's pretty much it. Uh Maybe Deadman, but I mean, if you're counting on Dwayne Deadman, um, congrats on eighth place in your league. Um, yeah, I think I think that about wraps it up. Um, maybe we'll be back in the. You know, we don't tend to do this very often, but maybe this is the start of something beautiful. Uh, maybe we'll be back in the summer to recap some summer transactions. Um, you got anything else? No, pretty. Uh, that's pretty. We I think we covered it pretty well. Uh. Yeah, like you said, maybe we can uh, make this a more regular thing and annoy everybody else like we annoy Richard. Yeah, I mean, too. not just Richard. Definitely don't forget how we annoy Joe. Oh, yes. Yeah, all right. So tell the people where they can find you. I forgot your Twitter, hand- Twitter handle. Otherwise, I'd shout it out myself. Appreciate that. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at jchen underscore 811. Okay, all right. And uh, I know you're doing some writing. You still, I'm sure you got links plugged up there. I mean, what are you going to do? Give me a link right now. No, that doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, check out Jonathan. You can find him at whatever link he just or whatever Twitter name he just gave you. You can find me at Twitter uh, at Kevin M H U O. That's my last name. It's hard to spell, so I'll just say it. Uh, I think that's about it. Thanks for joining us, and uh, you know, enjoy the rest of the season.